Coming up on Hot Hardware on Tech Beat, Intel 6-core processors, fake Intel chips, the Dell Xeno HD, and more with Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta. Save time and money by skipping business trips and using GoToMeeting. Visit gotomeeting.com slash tech podcast and get 30 days for free. The first 6-core processor has arrived and it's by Intel. Marco, you got to review the 6-core monster. How did it do? It did absolutely fantastic. So, of course, not every application is going to take advantage of a, a six-core CPU that's capable of processing 12 threads with hyper-threading. But basically, across the board, um, it's the fastest uh, CPU, desktop CPU we've ever tested. You're looking at a 3.33 uh, gigahertz core clock with six, you know, six physical cores, uh, 12 logical cores, and uh, it just ripped through the benchmarks. It was a supremely fast processor. How does, how does it compare on the price scale? I would imagine it's got to be pretty expensive since it's the first of its kind. Supremely. So, yeah, yeah, yes, it is actually. Um, so first, I should probably mention the model number, huh? It's the, the Core i7-980X Extreme Edition, and that kind of supplants the Core i7-975 at the top of Intel's lineup. But, you know, it is, it is expensive. It's a $1,000 processor, but you have to keep in mind it's replacing a quad-core that was the same price. So you're getting 50% more cores, 50% more cash, much more performance, and it actually, it's within the same power envelope. So, yes, it's a lot of money, but in terms of what it's replacing, it's, you know, it's really technically a bargain. <laughs> so the bottom line is that it's, it's awesome. It's expensive, but awesome. Yes, and, you know, that bargain line was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Hot Hardware got to test out a couple of new computers. First, let's talk about the Toshiba Satellite E205 S1904. Man, that's a catchy name. You know, I think I'm going to name my kid that. It has Y die. <laughs> could you could you fill the viewers in about this notebook? Yeah, a little bit of alphabet soup there, huh, brother? Oh um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Toshiba's uh, come up with a with a nice machine uh, based on the new Intel uh, Arendelle platform which is their new line of mobile processors, Core i5, specifically Core i5 M430 in this notebook. And uh, it's, it's really nice. It's highly integrated, stylish, you know, little machine uh, built by Toshiba with um, 4 gig of RAM and uh, built with Windows 7 Home Premium. Um, and, you know, it's got some pretty cool features, actually, that are kind of above and beyond a, a sort of a, a breakout from the norm, if you will. So it's got something called Wi Dye. That's supposed to do what? Wireless uh, video to your television? How does that work? You, uh, you're, you've been cheating, haven't you? A little bit. Um, yeah, I actually read hothardware.com in my spare time, so I have to ask go, questions. Go figure. Um, yeah, actually, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's kind of you know, one of the, the features that makes this notebook special. Um, it, it, it certainly has some power under the hood in terms of you know, multimedia performance. It's, it's got a, you know, integrated uh, Intel HD graphics, which isn't going to provide you a ton of gaming performance, but certainly will allow for, you know, uh, high performance, uh, uh, high def vi uh, video, I should say, streaming and whatnot, um, or, you know, playback, uh, you know, via the web or, or Blu-ray. But it's also got wide die technology on board, and Intel wide die technology is exactly as you described. It's, it's wireless to your TV over an 802.11 uh, connection, okay, and the, it, the notebook com comes bundled with a, uh, a little box from Netgear that actually... Um, receives a signal, you plug it in over HDMI, the, the, the Netgear box, over HDMI to your TV, and then the notebook actually streams to that box your video signal, and you can browse the web, and you can play you know, high-def video, whether it be you know, streamed from YouTube or what have you, or even you know, something you pop in the, in the ROM drive. So it's, it's pretty cool, it's pretty impressive, and it's you know, sort of you know, a takeoff of this notion of convergence and um, you know, the compute platform in the living room, in the kitchen, and we also went over um, uh, a product this week from Dell called the Xeno HD, which is a little toaster-style small form factor PC that, um, again, could, could double real nicely as a home theater PC. And, you know, small enough to, to fit in your entertainment center, has onboard um, ATI Radeon graphics. Uh, and, you know, again, highly integrated. And, you know, these are the sorts of platforms that, you know, Intel and Dell and all these big manufacturers are trying to integrate into our lifestyle now. So it's pretty cool to see it all come together. For the Dell Xeno HD, did you test out one that was like fully loaded that could handle HD decoding and everything, or was it one of the base models? Because I think the base models don't handle well, video that well. So how did, how did the model you uh, try out go? Yeah, yeah, this has got an ATI Radeon, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what kind of uh, graphics, uh, Radeon HD 4330 graphics processor with 5 
112 meg worth of its own discrete uh, graphics memory. So it's got its own graphics engine, and yeah, it it can even do a little bit of light duty gaming, believe it or not. And uh, on the on the big screen, that's a whole lot of fun. Sounds pretty cool from a small package. Marco, let's talk about a fiasco, shall we? Newegg was selling fake Intel chips, and then the story gets even weirder. Could you fill us in about this? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of nutty. Newegg actually shipped hundreds of fake Intel Core i7-920 processors. People, you know, just ordered their stuff, got their boxes, opened them up, and there was, you know, a fake CPU. It kind of looked like it was stamped out of lead and basically a big plastic nut with a sticker on the top that looked like a fan. So if you look <laughs> through the window on the box, it looked like there was a fan in there. But, you know, hundreds of folks got these fake chips and all contacted Newegg saying, hey, you know, what the heck is going on? And, you know, a little bit of a uh, little bit of controversy stirred because news hit the web that it was a certain distributor that Newegg used. But it was actually another one and some cease and desist letters were sent out. It got a little crazy. Are they suing people about this or is this just a, a cease and desist stop saying it's from us thing? Um, it was just a cease and desist to a couple of websites. I don't think anybody's going to get sued because Newegg, you know, they're going to make it right. They're so big and their customer service is, you know, is very high. So they're going to take care of the customers that got screwed and... Yeah, I'm sure it's all going to go away eventually, but it's just wild to see these things popping out of the boxes. Yeah, this is a very unusual thing for Newegg in general. They do actually have a very good reputation in general. I I've ordered from them several times, but uh, I might think twice a little bit now. Uh, you know, I hear Android's taking over the mobile world. Dave, what's the deal? Is anyone else winning, or is everyone losing ground to Android? Well, I, th I think certainly there are others winning for sure. Um, we had a headline on the site that, uh, you know, Android crushes the competition, iPhone stands still. And, um, you know, that's kind of a over-the-top sensational headline that gets your attention. You know, the news, we're, we're, we're known for doing that once in a while. Um, but you're absolutely right. Android is making huge gains in market share. And actually, we have some numbers in from Comscore, which is looking at, um, you know, through three-month average ending January uh, 2010, and Android is up 4%, or Android platform-based mobile phones, is, uh, it's up 4% um, from the last time Comscore looked at it. Palm is down 2%. Microsoft, believe it or not, down 4%. So as much as Android gained, Microsoft OS-based products lost. And then, you know, Apple is kind of flat. You know, there's zero, you know, 0.3% gain. The other people that are making some headway is RIM. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it's, it's impressive to see how well Android is doing in the market. You know, I'm kind of curious about this. Uh, I mean, Android's on a lot of different handsets. iPhone's obviously on like one or two, I guess if this is the iPhone, and different models of it. But I mean, do you think these numbers are kind of, I don't know, a little fake? I mean, because everyone's waiting on the next version of the iPhone, so nobody's going to be buying one now. Everyone's waiting on Windows Phone 7. And RIM, I mean, they have like a thousand models as well. So Android taking over the market, is this really like a... A, a fair thing, or is this just kind of like, well, this is totally going to change in five months? Well, I, th I think you're right, and you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, I as, um, you know, market share is market share, and these are percentage gains which show, you know, you know in, well in favor of the Android platform. But if you look at the total market share, RIM, you know, everybody on there, Blackberry's in business, 41% of the market, Apple, 24.8%, 25% of the market, that's huge for only having a couple of phones out there. And, and one manufacturer, right? And then Microsoft at like 20%, and Google, you know, with, with Android is down at 2%. They're actually the smallest percentage in the market, and Palm's like 7.8. So, you know, for sure it's all relative, but I guess what's, what's important that, you know, the takeaway here is the gain that Android is making, and I think you'll continue to see that as we progress through 2010. Yeah, it's like Android's a serious player. You know, it's time to give back to the readers and viewers of Hot Hardware. Marco, tell them what they could win. I will tell them. Um, this is actually the last week for the Show and the Love contest. And yeah. our system actually includes a real Core i7-920 processor, <laughs> Radeon, right HD, uh, Radeon HD 5870. We are giving it away next week. So, you know, hit the site, make some comments, you know, get in on the action. Sounds awesome. I believe that's valued at somewhere around $2,000. So yes. all you got to do is show up to the site and you can get like two grand's worth of, worth of goods. That's awesome. Go check it out. And that's it for this episode of Hot Hardware on TechBeat. Marco and Dave, thank you for all that information. You guys can find everything we talked about over at hothardware.com. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and thanks for watching.